Hey, this is Mike Metzig and welcome to the Service Design Show. Hi, I'm Mark Fontaine. Welcome to your two weekly burst of service design inspiration where you get to learn what some of the world's best service designers are currently doing. We talk about the current state of the industry, exciting new developments and the challenges up ahead. With the Service Design Show, we help you to become a better service designer so you can make a bigger impact on the world around us. We bring you a new episode every two weeks on Thursday. So if you don't want to miss anything, be sure to click that subscribe button. My guest in this episode is Mike Metzitz. Mike is one of the co-founders of the Customer Experience Navigators community within Deutsche Telekom. A community focused on spreading design thinking and customer centricity throughout the whole organization. For the next 30 minutes or so, we'll be talking about topics like what is the Customer Experience Navigators community exactly? We'll also talk about how to move from project work to changing a mindset and finally how to overcome the hurdle of uncertainty. If you want to fast forward to one of these topics, check out the episode guide down below in the description or just stick around and enjoy the whole episode. Welcome to the show, Mike. Hi, welcome. Ha very happy uh, that you could join uh, actually this morning uh, uh, from Bonn. You are based in Bonn, right? Yeah, that's true. I'm based in Bonn um, at um, yeah, Dodger Telecom. You're actually one of the first guests on the show, I think, who is working within a large corporate. Usually I've had people that are service design practitioners from agencies. So I'm really curious to your story today. Okay. Mike, um, this is the first question I uh, ask all my guests. And it is, do you remember the very first time you actually encountered the term service design or design thinking? Oh yeah, I, I really, really remember it very well because it was a breaking point in our journey, actually. Um, because um, Mark Stickton from, from the guys from Smapley um, introduced us to um, not only Smapley, but later on also on the, um, let's say, framework of um, design thinking and service design. And um, that was the point where we saw, okay, this is really that the framework and toolbox we need to get to the next level in terms of customer experience here in, at Telekom in Germany, because we started beforehand with customer journey mapping, intensive workshops with customer journey mapping, but at the end, it was always that we left the project with some, let's say, pain points from the customers, but didn't really help them to overcome that pain points and to give them a methodology how to um, improve. And uh, that was something we didn't really yeah, think was very good, but but that then we saw okay, this is the opportunity we are looking. So, at. so what do you remember? What did Mark say to you? What 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 stuck in your head? It was um, I think it was the co-creation part actually. So really working co-creative with customers directly on the topic and just really get immediately into solutions rather than planning. So that was really um, the the eye opener for us actually to to also to change the way we support projects. Hmm. Interesting, the, the, the transitioning from planning to actually doing project, uh, making solutions, that's, that's a really good one. We have to thank Mark for that. <laughs> um, Mike, uh, you gave me three topics and I gave you some question starters. And yeah. uh, uh, and so talking from, about co-creation, we'll be co-creating the, uh, the, the topics uh, for the next uh, 30 minutes. So. I'll uh, just start with the first topic, and I think that's the most logical one to start with because during the introduction I said you were one of the co-founders of the CX Navigator community. Um, so this is the first topic, CX Navigator, and is there a question starter? Is there um, something yeah, I think that matches with that? Like why? Yeah. So it's a why. So and the reason why we did it in that way. So I mean, I probably have to explain it a little bit more in detail what we are doing. Um, the CX navigators are a community within our company. So they are volunteers, colleagues are volunteering, um, and to do service design, design thinking for projects. So they are based in regular departments, units, sales, finance, marketing, wherever, across the whole company. And 30% of their time they're spending in 
other projects doing design thinking as a coach hmm. for other projects. So that is the idea. Um, and we did it that way because we believe that uh, we need some ambassadors in each department um, to spread the word of design thinking service design. And on the other hand, we also would like to have this operational, let's say, touch so that we don't have these, let's say, high-flying experts yeah, in a, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's say, universe and a separate universe. So we would like to have it really more practical in that way. And the other thing is, um, we are looking for, we are, let's say, our vision is that we transform a mindset in the company. And at one point, you don't need, maybe no need that much of experts navigators doing that coaching because everybody is thinking in that direction and you may have some special some 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 let's say deeper experts or yeah um to to support and to coach but um, at the end you don't need that much of of coaches anymore because mm -hmm. the mind has changed completely and the way of working has changed completely so so um how has this uh community evolved from the day that you started uh up to now what what has happened yeah, we, we started um, we started in uh, um, 2014 actually um, as part of a, let's say one of these campus programs. So these one big things that every enterprise corporation is doing. And at that time, there was also a, a separate stream um, called customer experience. But at the end, it was difficult to let's say follow up on these actions we we have developed and defined in that in that in that program. And, and, and we said, okay, and decided to, to do it really different now from now on and said, okay, we are using or we are trying to get some volunteers and get some people involved um, to just support projects to show what makes a difference in terms of doing customer-centric work. So that was the starting point. And we started with just four navigators mm -hmm. and did a few projects in 2014, five or six or something. And then um, the, um, let's say, the... Um, the um, importance went up also in Deutsche Telekom because um, um, our um, CEO was in the Silicon Valley and, and, and saw, uh, was at the Stanford University with some of the top leadership team of Deutsche Telekom yeah. and they saw design thinking in 2015 <laughs> and from, now, from then on they, they uh, let's say the importance and the, and the acknowledging of, of design thinking was, was fasting, mm -hmm. fast growing up in, in, in our company but the good thing was that at that point we already know and I knew what what to do and how to support projects in a certain way. So that was really, really good. And um, yeah, over the time of the last three years, we, we grew up to about 50 navigators now. Mm -hmm. We have trained more. So we have about trained 90 in the company um, and about um, 20, 25, uh, 25 to, to 30 are, um, let's say, active in terms of these 30 percent and um, about another 30 are, um, let's say, not um, are not able to to provide the 30 percent amount, but um, also have or supporting the community in terms of doing some workshops and 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 um, the things. And also our our let's say um, projects grew up um, rapidly. So in two the number of projects, num number of projects yeah. or um, things we did, um, it was uh, six or seven in 2014. In 15 it was about 20, I think, and last year it was about 60. So hmm. it was hmm. really so, <clears throat> a lot of questions that pop to my mind right now, but if you look back on the last three years and you could start uh, all over from scratch, what would you have done differently? Um, that's a good question. Um, I don't think that much different. I mean, hmm. I, I, would, I would probably um, circumvent some hurdles and challenges we or the pitfalls we fall into, some political stuff and also other things, but... In general, I think and I still believe that this approach is, is really good. Um, I mean, it's one of my other topics, let's say, this uncertainty stuff. So we, we really have to learn um, or we, we still have to learn to deal with this um, agile and, um, let's say, sprint approach. This is something we, we all have never learned in our company. Um, so that's really one of the biggest issues that we start really with the sprint logic very late. So it's not mm. that we started from the beginning. So that was maybe something I, from the learning now, I would change, so. All right. And um, I, you must have a, a, a dream or a vision of where the, the CX Navigator community is heading. So how, 
how do you hope it looks in the next three years? What have you achieved? Okay, yeah. Um, I hope that, that we don't need the community anymore. <laughs> That's really something we are working on. So, I mean, it's, it sounds like a, bit, a little bit weird, but, but it is like it is. We are, we are not a department. Um, it's really a community of volunteers. And, and we set it up that way because we, we are approaching that vision to say, okay, at one time we don't need that much of navigators. And then they have all their, let's say, regular work um, where they can go back still applying design thinking or service design, but then in their regular daily work, not only in projects. And if people want to learn more about how you've uh, implemented this within uh, within the company, are, is there some online material or? You mean in terms of methodology and training and stuff? Yeah, like I, I guess uh, some people will be uh, watching this episode and thinking, "Well, this is cool. Uh, I, I want to do this in my company too." Did you write about this or? Yeah, we. Um, I mean, we did a little little article in the um, Service Design Network in the recent issue. I think in October okay. it was published. Um, so and it's called Reinventing from Within. So it's it's about the journey of the CX navigators and it's also a little bit um, with with regards to training. But um, I have to have to admit that that we don't really set up the trainings, but we partner with some of our um, corporate, uh, in our corporate headquarters um, departments. There was there are two departments, Creation Center in Berlin from the T-Labs, yeah. which were starting design thinking, I think, 10 years ago now, from now on. And, and there were, um, there were the, the department which have trained us in the first instance. So the first wave of navigators mm. were trained by Creation Center. Mm. And the second one then was trained by another, another community in and the headquarters called Shareground. They also won the SDN award for um, implementation of training mm. concept. So because mm. they are responsible, because they are located in the HR department in mm. at the Telecom AG, um, they are responsible for setting up the um, let's say enabling formats, um, training design thinking. Um, we also let's say co-created these formats. So we we have also put in our experiences from from our project work into that the trainings and we do also um, the we call it boot camps um, the um, trainings from our six navigators we do on our own so it's still something we have in our hands or we do by our by ourselves um, because we have a little bit of different um, setting because we need them as soon as possible in projects after they have all right, all right. Interesting uh, topic, and I guess uh, let, let's quickly move on to the second one because I think it closely relates to what you already talked about. And <clears throat> you, you just mentioned the word uh, project, and the second topic is from projects, uh, from project work to mindset change. Is there a question starter? Do you have a question starter laying around? Yeah, <laughs> okay, that's maybe something like this. Um, when will so when will we achieve the mindset change um, um, running from a project to to the to the department? Let's put it that way. So. Be because you just said we want people to move as fast as they can into a project, and now you're talking about mindset change. How, how does that work? Um, yeah, the thing is, or maybe I, I can draw something if it's okay. Of course, yeah. <laughs> or, uh, just give me a minute. No, not even a minute. I'll, I'll uh, explain uh, what I'll see in the drawing for the people who are listening to the podcast instead of uh, watching the video. You can, you can also subscribe to the podcast uh, on SoundCloud and, and listen to the show on your daily commute. So Mike is frantically drawing. Yeah, so I'm, I'm already finished. So, there is. That so um, if you say, okay, we are doing CX projects, so design thinking, service design in that area. So we are doing it for, for kind of a department like finance or something. So they have a different, they have a dedicated challenge they would like to solve by a creative approach, let's put it that way. So, um, but, and so in this environment, we're doing the work very differently. So we do use a different methodology, we do use a different mindset and so on. Yeah, yeah. But there are a lot of other projects running in that department as well on a regular Methodology or yeah. uh, project management. So, but what we would like to achieve is that this is nothing which is, let's say, somehow connected to the department, but which is part of within. So, mm -hmm. 
the question is how we transfer the learnings from here to other projects mm -hmm. or even other, let's say, daily work. So because I think or I believe that service design or design thinking is not only a methodology for projects, but also a kind of a mindset that you really change your daily work. Yeah, yeah. It's the so, attitudes we often talk yeah, about. It's the, yeah. yeah, it's a way of working or way of thinking. Yes, yeah. So, um, and, and, and have you have you have you found any success? Are you achieving this, or is this really hard? It is really hard. It is really hard. I mean, we have, and that's the reason why we did that with the CX. Sorry, um, CX navigators. Um, if you see, we have those navigators placed in these departments. That's 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 the idea. So that yeah. we have navigators here. So they also spread the word in that. Although they may support a project from another department, that's the, that's the idea. But what we see is that if we have a lot of navigators in one department, the um, the demand from that area in terms of CX projects is also increasing. Mm -hmm. So there is relation to okay, there are people having a different mindset and um, also doing it in several projects because that is important. Not only training but also doing it then afterwards. And um, there is a relation that these departments um, demand more support in terms of um, design thinking or service design. So, 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 so um, taking this learning that where uh, you have the most, the, the biggest CX community, also the most CX work gets done. <clears throat> How, how do you spread that to departments that are, that are less open to this approach? Yeah, we use, um, that's something we use um, our um, sponsors. And we, we do have now sponsors since, uh, I think, end of uh, 2015. So two board members are supporting our community. And they also manage that we get a kind of, a, let's say, um, yeah, support from, from the whole board of management regarding this 30% of the navigators stuff. Um, so, uh, and, and they take care and, and support us in terms of that we, that we get into those departments which are not really applying now. How, how important is that? Oh, it's really important. I mean, um, if you, I mean, if you take the chance to, to read our article, um, we, uh, to a certain extent it was very okay that nobody really looked at us. Mm -hmm. That was really, because we had the chance to learn and to fail uh, in terms of what we do in the projects, um, but and as we grew up and we would like to, yeah, um, spread the word more and do it a little bit more sophisticated, then it was really important to get this support. So um, it's it's the moment to scale when you want to scale. Yeah. You need yeah. to you need to find support from yeah. on board level. Yeah, I think it's 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 helped us a lot. Um, it, it especially in our let's say um, very. Mm, yeah, special setup with these uh, part-time navigators. Let's put it that way. So that was because this is really a challenge. I mean, these thirty percent is always a challenge because yeah. they are they are um, let's say um, also have uh, responsibilities and in in the regular work and and it's also very hard to plan our demands because projects coming every now and then and they would like. It, it, <laughs> Um, almost they would like to start next week, so that's the challenges we're facing, I think. So how, how did you manage to, to actually achieve that 30%? Because I think a lot of organizations would say that that's, that's, that's part of the magic, if you actually manage to get people to spend 30% of their time on such projects. Yeah, the thing is, um, we proved that it worked in the, in the beginning. So with, with the start that we said, okay, we have just a few people and they were volunteering and they said, okay, I, I really take that time no matter what and, and my superior is supporting it. So that was also also important that we have two, two or three business leaders, so they were not on board level, but business leaders saying, okay, I think that idea is Kind of smart. We, let's try it. And I, I here's here are some people that you can use in for that thirty percent case. And um, and then we proved that it worked. That this thirty percent also is is reliable and is also feasible, so that you can manage or support a project with this thirty percent level. So, and now now explain us how did you manage to prove that? What 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 was the secret? 
And the secret was that that we and it's not really a secret. It was just <laughs> like that, that the feedback from the project was so so tremendous. So they, they said, okay, we never have worked that way, and we never have um, had um, these uh, results that we saw from when we talk about customer perspective and stuff like that. So it was really word of mouth from the projects because the project said, okay, it was really, really helpful what we did. So it and was the, just... The, of, and the, did, you have to, did, you, did you have to prove the result in any... Did you have to quantify the results or, or were they really qualitative results? No, we, don't, we didn't have had... Um, uh, luckily, we, did, we didn't really were charged to um, quantify it. Um, yeah. to, and sometimes questions came up like this, but it's really hard to quantify it because you don't have these um, AB, um, let's say, separate uh, this AB testing because you don't don't do projects in one way and the other way. And could you can't yeah. measure the yeah. So, um, but yeah, we we were involved in projects um, which are also related to cost savings and, and other stuff. And, and yeah, they, they, they achieved their goals of cost savings. So was it just because us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. We don't know. I mean, how you measure? How would you measure that? I mean, <clears throat> yeah, that's that's yeah, you know, that's that's the interesting topic within uh, <laughs> service design. Yeah, of course. Mike, let's move on to uh, the third topic, and that that is this is um, a really interesting one, and it hasn't been on the show a lot. And you called this topic the hurdle of uncertainty. Is there a question yeah. starter that goes along with this one? Uh, I'm sure there is. Good question. Just good pick question. a random yeah. one. <laughs> Challenge yourself. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's it. Uh, how we can overcome, I think, the hurdle of uncertainty. Um, because um, it's it's also to us itself. I mean, we are, uh, or especially my person itself, I'm, I'm really, I'm really a, let's say, um, kind of a 100% guy. So I would like to achieve 100% quality. So to, to that. So that's, that's my... Mm -hmm. that's, Say DNA, let's put it that way. So, and uh, this is, um, but in service design or design thinking, I learned that that is more important to really quick and dirty put the ideas to test and to to real life to see whether this is feasible or not. And and that's something I really I really liked on on design thinking. But it's always a kind of a mindset thing. So it, it's a gut feeling says, oh, whoo, whoo, that's that's not it feels a little bit. Uncertain, so it's it's really really kind of a let's say thing in the head, I, I believe. And um, but what is more important is um, the project has the same feeling. So the project members coming to us and say, okay, we would like to achieve certain goals, resolve a certain challenge, um, um, and they are feeling not very comfortable in doing that. So at the beginning, because we didn't really know how how to deal it, to deal better better with that, was that we more or less do a kind of a sequential um, design thinking process so mm -hmm. that we take time for exploration doing customer interviews stuff like that and we define IDA prototypes so and that was always or most most of the time that was the end of our support in the project so, mm -hmm. so we provided them with ideas or prototypes and then they they went off and um, did whatever they did with the ideas yeah. so, yeah. so um, but what we see is especially in bigger projects, is that the time frame from starting exploration to prototyping was too long so that the people really didn't saw the, saw the end, so they didn't really saw results in between. They, they experienced a lot and, and learned a lot, but they really saw, okay, wow, when does it end? When, when do we come to the point? So mm -hmm. what do we what, what, at what moment do we make impact on actual yeah. customers or yeah. on the business? Yeah. They have things in mind that say, okay, we need to solve the problem. So when do we solve the problem? Yeah, so yeah. Something we experience, especially in bigger programs, in bigger and bigger uh, projects. And um, we try now more to do really the sprint logic so that we, that we um, do quick and dirty prototyping um, to learn from the prototyping and explore around that again to see, okay, mm -hmm. whether that's, that's good or not. So have you, found, have you found some sort of sweet spot in, in the time box? How fast do your projects move? Um, what did you mean? Could you explain well, again? You, you know, how, how fast... I, I'm really curious if you, if you, through prototyping, have found, well, uh, we can take two weeks or two months or, or six months to come to, where, to, where, to an impact. When do, get, when do people get uncomfortable? 
Oh yeah, yeah. okay, okay. That, that I can tell you. Um, we have now we have currently running a really big project which which is uh, has actually eight substreams, for example. So um, the project team is about 150 people, big, um, 120, 150, is it? and um, we are now supporting that project for about five months now, and yeah. and we yeah. now are in the session of iterative prototyping, mm -hmm. and we saw. And it was just close to to, um, to Christmas last year that that we saw kind of a dip in the motivation of the people because they, they had three months working really hard on exploration, defining, and also a little bit ideation. But really, they they saw okay, okay, when when yeah. do we have yeah. these uh, let's say speed up? So that was that was our our let's say mindset thing or what, what where we see okay, there's something we need to change in, in terms, of, especially for those bigger. Issues or biggest so three months from, uh, from in, in three months spending three months in the research phase is is quite long, right? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, of course. In the in the ideal situation, how how fast should it go? Do you think? I think um, you should. Yeah, probably you have several research phases now. Uh, so yeah, do it like that uh, now, um, or we we also tried it already, and um, I think you should. You should not more spend not more than two or three weeks hmm. before you get to the project uh, to to a kind of a, at least a, a certain set of prototypes. Yeah, the, the, when, when you have something to show. Yeah. Yeah, of course. It might, it, it always depends on that. That's something special also here in, in our in our company. Probably not not for enterprises, but um, we we usually don't have don't have really project teams which are running hundred percent on the project. So we have also hmm. we have all. Hmm ways um, to deal with that maybe only the project team can only spend 30% of their time in that specific project, so it's one and a half day a week, so that's also, that's always the reason why we need to, um, let's say stre stretch the time um, for exploration, because I mean exploration needs time, it yeah. depends on, on the size of the challenge um, but um, we now try to let's say even if they only spend could spend thirty percent, we already we already try to, to have at least prototypes in two or three weeks time, <laughs> and that that is really difficult because then the feeling of the project team is okay. We we don't really have understood the challenge mm. of mm. really really the, the the area of exploration, so we just dig into a certain certain. Mm. Yeah, certain and you, you can you cannot do the research for them, I guess, because it's it's part of actually doing the research yourself that you. Understand the issue, understand the problem, right? So, um, yeah, they well, have to be involved in the research, I guess. Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. of course. The approach we do because we don't, we don't do. Uh, we are, we are not a, not an agency, let's yeah. say. So yeah, We are just coaching a project to get to better results with design thinking. So, they do the research, and that's also the hurdle they need to, let's say, learn a little bit how to research correctly mm -hmm. or get some tips and tricks how to research and. Um, yes, of course, we provide the methodology to say, okay, do interviews, to visits, to whatever. Um, but um, at the end, they have to also have a learning curve in that because, I mean, if, you, if you're not used to um, um, make interviews with customers, then the first interview is probably not that good. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Mike, we're heading um, towards the end of the uh, this episode already. And uh, the question I always end with is... This is your opportunity to ask a question to the viewers, and I'm always really curious. So, what is your big question at this moment? What, what yeah. keeps you awake? Um, that is really the question about these uncertainty things. So, how we can make project teams more confident in dealing with these uncertainties that we just dig into a certain areas of an exploration area and go for the fast prototypes and then that they have the feeling and the belief that it's still providing them good results. Mm. So that's one of my, that's really the, mm. the top, top topic I have in mind. Yeah. <clears throat> For people who are also interested in this, one of the quite recent episode, Mauricio Manas also mentioned this in, um, in embracing uh, ambiguity, I, I think he mentioned. So mm -hmm. not, not trying to fit it into a box, but... Yeah, having the box open and then embracing that, right? That's, that's I guess, yeah, some... Same, same topic, I believe, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Mike, the time flew by and I'm really happy that you, you, you took the opportunity to share your experiences within a large corporate uh, on the show. So uh, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for your time. So what are your thoughts about the topics we've just discussed with Mike? Let us know down below in the comments. This show is all about helping you to become a better service designer by sharing real life stories of people that are currently shaping the service design field. If you enjoyed this episode and like to see more, check out some of the past episodes and click that subscribe button. For now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in two weeks time.